After last week's 20-minute episode premiere, we're back to the standard 12-minute Amphibia episode format with Commander Anne and Sprivey. And I'm just going to be straight with you guys. There were definitely things to like in both of these. Particularly, like, the climaxes of them. <laughs> and I understand that it's important to reestablish the status quo again now that we're back in Amphibia. But I didn't love these. <laughs> I thought they were fine. But that's really it. I thought they were fine. And if that's all you need to hear, I guess you can go ahead and duck out of this review. I genuinely won't mind if you choose to do so. Or, especially if your opinion on these episodes is very different from mine, you can stick around, hear what I have to say, and then, you know, we can talk about it in the comments. I'd actually really like to do that. If I can get something more out of these episodes, I, I feel like that would be a good thing. Again, not to say they're bad. I don't think they're, like, bad episodes. I just feel like they could have been stronger. Starting, of course, with Commander Anne. I do think that overall this is the stronger of the two of them. I think it was just my own tastes that kind of prevented me from liking it as much as I maybe should have. But in this episode, that kind of picks up immediately where the previous episode left off, with the planters looking out over the devastation that Andreas has wrought upon Amphibia. We quickly see our heroes return to Wirtwood to find that it's in ruins. It seems that Sasha has failed at protecting the town. Except, very soon after that, we see some mysterious figures appear on the horizon. And by on the horizon, I mean they, like, come over the top of a building or something, I think. I don't really remember exactly. But they appear, and they're people from the town... <laughs> All of whom have changed at least a little bit. And Sasha's with them, wearing Wartwood's commander's helmet, which is a thing, I guess. And she leads them back to the planter's homestead and down through the planter's family tunnels, which I, I don't... Did we know that was a thing? If we knew that was a thing, I forgot that it was a thing. But it was very cool. Into the secret, literal underground resistance fighting to reclaim Amphibia, and it's it's just the town. The Resistance is literally just the entirety of Wordwood. They're all alive in these underground caverns, they're living pretty well, and Sasha has organized them into a very effective fighting force. Except for the Mayor and Toadie, who just sit around counting money all day. So honestly, what else are they good for? And Sasha seems very dismissive of what happened between her and Anne before Anne left for Earth. And Anne is pretty quick to put it aside, too, for the good of the mission. But Sasha, in particular, seems, like, actively dismissive of it. Like, she just doesn't want to address it. And it's certainly nice to see that she's been humbled by what happened back in Utopia, and then, I would imagine, subsequently by what's happened off-screen during her time here protecting the people of the town. But you can tell something's up, and it seems odd that she's so relieved when she hands over the commander role to Anne. Because, like, yeah, the townspeople want Anne to be their commander. They've known Anne for longer, I still think, at this point, than they have Sasha, right? But between the way the characters are animated and the way Sasha's being voice acted here, it's, it's pretty clear that she's not pushing this commander role onto Anne because she believes that Anne's better for the job, she's doing it because something else is going on with her. And so when a mission comes up to roll out a small force to a location where Andreas's forces are building mind control collars to control the wildlife and turn them into weapons, when things go awry because Anne is in charge and yet she doesn't understand how this fighting force operates. She doesn't understand the details of Amphibia in the state that it's in now. She's just not suited to this, especially right now today. And as, as a result of that, their little fighting force starts to be literally eaten by a giant snake in armor and tries to return the commandership to Sasha, but she won't take it, leading to Anne thinking that leading Anne to thinking that this is Sasha going back to her old manipulative ways, that she hasn't actually changed at all. 
forcing Sasha to admit that the reason she doesn't want to be commander is because she has changed. She recognizes how power affects her and doesn't want to be put in a situation where she can cause so much harm again. And seeing that Anne's not going to be able to convince her not to feel that way in time for them to solve this situation, she does the only reasonable thing. She lets herself get eaten by the giant snake too, forcing Sasha to take charge of the group again and save everyone. But still, like, <laughs> geez, that's a reckless thing to do. And like, I can tell you that it's obvious from the way Sasha behaves throughout this entire episode that she's already grown past being that person anymore and she needs to just get over it. But I don't even need to, because that's basically what Anne tells her by the end of this episode. And they reconcile and Sasha is the commander again. At the end of this, Anne is just one of the soldiers. She's a very trusted and, I mean, I don't, I don't imagine they have official ranks, but still, like, high-ranking soldier, but she is under Sasha in this endeavor. And I think that's such a cool dynamic for them to have, because, and we see this especially in the next episode, Sasha is really good at this. Like, so good at it. And that's what makes this episode, I think, objectively stronger than the next one. Unfortunately, both of these episodes had things in them that annoyed me, but this one had that really good character stuff for Sasha and for Anne and Sasha. And while again, I don't think either of these episodes is technically bad, considering the fact that I was personally underwhelmed by them, this one is the stronger out for those reasons. But frustratingly, they tried to shoot for humor throughout the entire background of this episode. And some of it worked. Like, there was a scene where... Was it Wally? Maybe? Was Wally with them? I don't remember. Somebody gets tossed into the air by the giant snake and then snatched and eaten out of the air while the girls are having a conversation, an emotional conversation, in the foreground. And for whatever reason, the way it was framed or something, that particular scene made me laugh, but the rest of the humor in this episode just fell flat for me. Like, by the end it was different, because by the end everybody was getting eaten by a giant snake. The danger had become so absurd that it didn't really feel like genuine danger anymore. It felt lighthearted enough that you could make fun of it. But up until then, seeing Anne fail over and over again to lead these people, leading to putting them in very real dangerous situations, I just didn't find it amusing at all. And there was this whole bit throughout the entire episode of the other planters being so used to the conveniences and comforts of Earth that they were just whining about amphibia being gross and difficult in comparison. And that just, that just made me not like them for the duration of this episode. Like, I don't know what they expected out of that bit, but it just, it wasn't fun. Again, not terrible. There was good character work here and good action here. It's just, I felt like we had to slog our way through an episode full of bad gags and character work that, while good, was pretty self-explanatory before we got to the stuff that was really worth talking about. And unfortunately, that's how I feel about the second of these episodes, too. Almost beat for beat, I just don't think that the character work in this one was as strong. Based on the title of this second of these two episodes, Sprivy. I'm sure you can tell which two characters the episode's about. That's right, Marcy and Andreas. No, I'm kidding. It's about Sprig and Ivy. Obviously, they're together again, and that means they're together again, right? And the episode is all about how they're so happy to be together, and they feel so in sync when it comes to not just their relationship, but like everything else in their lives, that they're just being annoying about it. And there's been a bit of a time jump, we can tell, because... Everybody seems, everybody who wasn't already, at least, seems accustomed now to how Amphibia has changed in the process of fighting in a resistance. And clearly, Sprig and Ivy have been pretty saccharine, sugary, annoying about their relationship for a while now because people are kind of fed up with it. And it's amusing, it's amusing that this is the case, but the entire episode hinges on them doing something really stupid because they're so obsessed with each other that they can't spend 
literally five minutes apart. And not like the five minutes that it took Frieza to blow up at Planet Namek, like an actual five minutes. Except not really. They did they 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 stretched it out a little bit, but like they didn't stretch it out over 20, 20 minute episodes. Um, just in case you guys are keeping track of all of my geek points, that's a Dragon Ball Z reference. And what it boils down to is that Sasha is leading Spray and Ivy and Stumpy and then a character called Fern on a mission to disable a, I guess, technically automated defense system. It's, it's manned by robots and the robots are a little sapient, maybe, <laughs> but I mean, there's still automation technically. Uh, so that someone can get through with a shipment of much-needed supplies. A rich frog who is sympathetic to Wartwood's cause. And Sprig is paired with Stumpy, and Ivy is paired with Fern. And they don't want that. They want to be paired with each other. But it's clear. It's clear just from looking at the dynamic of this group, and, and the fact that they only have five minutes to get the job done, so therefore have to be as efficient as possible, that they've been paired into these two groups for a very specific reason. Sasha's staying back so that she can signal the supplier once the defense system is taken down. They have five minutes while the robots are changing shifts, which is the funniest thing ever. Like, the way they frame it in the episode, it's, it's pretty hilarious. You, sh you should watch it, for that at least. And, and Sasha's not going to be able to be directly involved in this herself, so she needs them to operate as efficiently as possible and you have Stumpy, he's, he's the guy from the diner. He's gruff and blunt and capable, but not particularly smart. No offense to him. And Fern, who I thought was a new character, but I actually, I actually checked. We saw her back in like episode six of season one. She worked at the salon. She's this earnest, cute, endearing airhead type character. And meanwhile, Sprig and Ivy are very similar in terms of personality and in terms of capability. And so, and Sasha explains this better than I would have been able to without her assistance at the end of the episode. It's two commandos protecting two specialists. They need Fern to cut the power cables powering the force field around the defense system, and they need Stumpy to destroy the defense system. Fern and Stumpy have been paired with Ivy and Sprig so that Ivy and Sprig can defend them in the process of this. And so when the two of them switch things up and Sprig and Ivy go together, the mission initially seems like it's going to fail because it turns out the power depot is like a freaking robot too and it protects itself and it leads to a pretty cool fight. And in the end, the two groups do end off splitting up the way that Sasha wanted them to and they complete the mission just in time. And everything goes well, and Sasha does chastise them a little bit at the end. But she does so in a delicate way that leads them to the revelation of what they did wrong and why it was wrong, only really explaining it in detail after that. And, like, she's just such a good leader, guys. Her plan was really strong, and she handles them well. These two are kids, Sprig and Ivy, are kids. It makes sense that they might not understand immediately why she made the choice that she did, and seeing that they didn't when she didn't realize that they didn't, and that they almost screwed up but didn't, she uses it as a learning opportunity. And they get it, and they decide to tone things down a little bit. And it, it's fine. Like, this episode leads us satisfactorily to this character point, but I don't feel like it works. I feel like because there was a bit of a time skip there where these two did reunite and reached this point where they're so codependent off screen <laughs> that it doesn't have the impact that it should. I feel like if we had gotten a couple more status quo establishing filler episodes in there where we had seen them rebuilding their relationship and reaching this point as like B plots. And then it had reached this boiling point, it would have been so much more effective. The fact that we were just shoved into it, I don't think it works. The episode's fine. It has a strong beginning, middle, and end. The moral's nice. Don't focus so hard on one relationship that you neglect everything else. 
Like, like that, that's the message you can take from this and, like, apply it to the real world. Because most people are not fighting a guerrilla resistance in their real life yet. But I just feel like it happened too quickly. <laughs> and, like, I don't want the show dwelling too much on the reestablishment of the status quo stuff. Because I want it to start getting into the meat of things again as quickly as possible. But maybe that just means that we didn't need this episode. Maybe that just means that we needed a different episode here instead. Again, not terrible or anything, but just kind of so-so, at least in my opinion. Though I will say I did like Stumpy and Fern. They were pretty neat. It was nice seeing a little bit more of them. Fern was genuinely pretty hilarious, as was Sasha's cheerleader routine that she used to signal the rich frog who is, I mean, I've never seen this character before in my life. No idea who it could be. Neither does Ivy, even though she seems to think otherwise. And as you can see by the fact that I made a bit out of that bit at the end, again, I didn't hate the episode or anything. I, I just feel like both of these episodes could have been stronger than what they were. That's really my main complaint. I don't think they did terribly, <laughs> but I still feel like they could have done better. These were like C-plus episodes. That said, as per usual, what do you guys think of Commander Anne and Spry if you have seen them? Again, like I said at the top of the video, if you guys have a different opinion on these, especially, I want to hear about it. I want to talk about these episodes. Please try to make me like these episodes more than I do. But either way, let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, you might as well like the video, share it with anyone else who you think would enjoy my content, subscribe if you haven't. You can also check out links to my various social medias, as well as the many ways you can have out the channel. Those will be in the video description. But either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.